the formidable robots. The concept of culture is something that I would define with two spectrums. One spectrum is the normal spectrum where people are interested in digestible stuff like Irish rugby or Ted Lasso or the American Masters in golf, and the other spectrum is the independent spectrum where people are interested in different mediums of art and media and are dedicated to represent those mediums through dressing up as cartoon characters and going to conventions, or entering the animation industry to create something of their own. I lie between these two spectrums where one day you might catch me animating something in Photoshop, and the other day you might catch me getting wasted in the pub, calling the referee in a match with Ireland playing against New Zealand a scumbag. When it comes to the independent spectrum however, I'm in a number of groups on Facebook and Instagram dedicated to talking about different pieces of media from two decades ago. One of these groups, is a private Facebook group dedicated to talking about the BBC's, in my opinion, most recognized children's television character, Brum. I grew up with the second iteration of Brum that had aired on television in 2001 as I was born two weeks after it had aired and had discovered it around 2002. I discovered the first iteration of the series from 1991 and 1994 when YouTube started taking off around 2008, and I was given limited access to it by my parents for my safety, but I was firmly in the camp that the 2001 series much more exciting to me as a child. When it comes to the Facebook group that I'm in, I don't have much to say about it other than two members from the production of the show own it, and sometimes they hold little events here and there, dedicated to the history of the show. More often than not, they post behind the scenes pictures of the show that were never seen on the internet until 2019. Stuff like how many stunt models of the character they built, and the fact that the original model in the first series, was the heaviest one that was built. One of these events that they held, was one that I am still happy that I had attended, but have thought too much about in recent months. It was a live stream dedicated to a lost episode from the second iteration of the series, that was never aired on CBBC in 2001 for reasons that weren't disclosed to the public. It was titled, Brum and the Bee. The episode had revolved around Brum driving to Hansworth Park in Birmingham, referred to as the big town in the series, where a costume party was happening, and encountering a bee orchid in the park and chasing a man wearing a bee costume, riding a bicycle, who stole some jars of honey from the orchid, with the help of a marching band who were practicing in the park for the costume party. Simple, fun to watch, and narrated by Tom Wright. What I was not expecting to keep thinking about, was the story of why the episode had never aired on television and was never released on any DVDs or VHS tapes. The two guys told everyone that the man in the bee costume, was allergic to honeybee stings and he wasn't aware of it until the day that the episode was filmed. In the episode, there was a scene where Brum had entered a big shed in the park that showed two beekeepers working with some hives, which were square white crates, stacked along two parallel lines of shelves in the shed, and the man in the bee costume followed him in there to steal the jars of honey without being spotted, and before leaving, he tripped over a crate that was on the floor. What was cut out from that shot, was that the man was supposed to fall in a certain way, and he fell towards the left of the shed and hit his head on a support beam, and knocked one of the hives off of the shelf on the left and it broke when it hit the floor. The man was stung a few times as the costume was ripped where he landed, and six of the bees got inside the costume, but he didn't go home after that shot, he worked through the pain, and he finished the shooting with everyone that day. The day before the episode was supposed to be announced on CBBC, the man contacted the director and told him that he had to go to the hospital as he was suffering from low blood pressure, even after applying the ointment to the parts on his body where he was stung. They then decided to not air the episode out of respect for what had happened. For me, it goes without saying that I have no interest in working on a set of a film or a television show, because of how one thing like that can go horribly wrong without any warning. It doesn't scare me as much as thinking about Richard Hammond's accident with the vampire dragster at the RAF Ilvington airfield near York, and the fact that James May was supposed to film it but was delegated to Hammond following some schedule conflicts, but it annoys me when I don't know how it happened.
I guess that I got this attitude when I did a safe pass course a few months ago, and we had to watch some poorly acted explainer videos about how safe you have to be when working on a building site, and we did some tests on who we would think would be in the right or in the wrong when it would come to some accidents. Either way, I am a lot more weary of my surroundings, no matter where I am, even when I'm drunk.